Bibles, if you would please, and open to the book of Acts. We're getting close to Acts chapter 28, but we're in chapter 26 tonight. And a little, just something a little different tonight as we're kind of just kind of go down through this. There's a, a ton of scripture this evening, a ton, and we could be here for quite some time just reading all of the scripture tonight. So that's why you have the uh, notes in front of you that will help you with this. And uh, you know what's been happening to Paul. Paul has been arrested, and he's going to spend two years in prison. Uh, he has appealed to go to Caesar. He wants to go to Rome and appeal before Caesar. And so, in the meantime, though, they've had him in court and trial, and they've had him up and brought these charges against him. And Paul has chosen to defend himself and to speak out for himself. And he's come before Festus the governor, Felix the governor, King Agrippa, and so forth before he gets to Rome. And so all of this is kind of going on uh, during this time with Paul and questioning and challenging his uh, authority, his apostleship, and mainly uh, challenging his message of the cross and especially the message of the resurrection. This has really gotten them excited and, uh, and uptight about the resurrection, of course. And again, this, the Pharisees had no problem with the resurrection. And they were as religious as you could get. They were zealot. They were uh, Jews. They were the elite group of religion. I mean, and, and these guys believed in the resurrection with no problem. They just did not believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That they did not like. That got them fruffled and all upset. And so, and of course, Paul was preaching that message and everywhere he went. And so, Paul, they've come and arrested him and all kinds of things and accusations brought against him. And Paul's been, during this time, defending himself. Uh, before uh, Felix, the governor, before Festus, the governor, and were brought into the picture, and these others as well. And King Agrippa has come onto the scene, and a lot of, you know, politicking going on between all those guys, you know, to build their case and get everything ready and, and on all of this stuff. And, uh, but Paul is wise in, in his uh, thinking because he knows he can appeal to the king, which is King Agrippa, who is over the two governors. And so the king has a little bit higher authority. So he wants to appeal to Agrippa, and of course, and all of this that's going on, church, uh, we sometimes wonder, why is all of this happening to me? Why am I going through all of this? And of course, we're not going through anything that Paul was going through. At least some of us haven't. But Paul took all of this to use as an opportunity to share his faith. He saw this as opportunities. He saw this as a, as a way of sharing his faith with some of the hierarchy, the, the head the chiefs and, and, and the priests and, and, the, uh, and the Sanhedrin and the, and the Pharisees and, and then with the governors and, and now with King Agrippa. So rather than, you know, woe is me and why am I going through all this? Paul took these opportunities that God had given him to share the gospel with these important people and high up people officials and so forth you know they need the gospel too don't always just take the gospel to the poor it's for the rich also the gospel's for the politician hello the gospel is for our governors and our and our and our senators and our congressmen and women i mean the gospel's for all of them and we need to take every opportunity and we sometimes miss so many opportunities that God gives us because we're not aware of them, that we're not looking for them, we're not sensitive to them. And I don't know, sometimes we, I think, looking in the wrong place where we expect God to have somebody come knock on our door and say, would you tell me about Jesus? Now that would be nice, wouldn't it? That would be great, that it would, but it's not, it's not like that, is it? You know, Jesus didn't say to the crowd, now go find a preacher or a missionary, evangelist or a believer and ask them how to get saved. No, he told us to go and find them. And he told us to go and share the gospel with them. And we must take the opportunities that we have to do so. And, and that's where we're at. Paul doesn't want to let the fire be quenched. Now listen to me. If you've got a fire burning in your bosom at all tonight for the gospel and to share the gospel with anybody and to reach souls, which is what we've been trying to do through this series of the, fire, the church empowered with the fire of God from the Holy Spirit by all things, let's not let it be quenched by regrets. And many everybody said, oh, only if we had have done this. If we had only went here, if we'd only done that, if we'd only said that, if we'd only, if we'd only, if we'd only, if we'd only, and then we live in those regrets. How many of us at a time or once in our lives we said, boy, I regretted doing that. 
I regretted being there or going there or saying that. And, and we live sometimes even in the haunt of those regrets, even way in the past, of things that we've regretted. And we don't want to live in regret tonight. Amen? Amen. We don't want to live with no reserves, no retreats, and no regrets. Paul wasn't going to live that way. He was, he was determined he would live with no reserves. He was determined he was not going to retreat, even though all of these charges were being brought up to him. And, they, and at times, even times when he was presenting his case, uh, Felix, the governor here, one of them, or, or Festus, they'd jump in and interrupt him and you know, try to change the subject or, or trip him up. And he determined he wasn't going to let that stop him. No retreats as a believer. And Paul was determined he wanted to live with no regrets. And a lot of times, folks, we missed opportunities to tell people about Christ. And then, you know, we have that regret. If only I had said something. If only I would have given them a track. If only I would have shared Jesus with that person at work or on the job or in the neighborhood. And now they're gone. And we've lost that opportunity. And then sometimes we say, wow, I regret it. I never said anything. I regret it that I never had them a track or told them about the Lord when we had many of opportunity. And so Paul was determined he wasn't going to live that way in spite of all of this. So let's pray. And we're kind of going to go through the first part of it kind of quickly here. I'm not going to read all of it. We'll just go through it so you get a little idea of what Paul is going through. Because maybe somewhere in there you can identify with something perhaps. And then and have no regrets, no retreats, no reserves. Go all out. Go for it. Share. What do you have to lose, church? Let me ask you, what do we have to lose in sharing Christ with someone? We have nothing to lose. Even if they throw us in jail, Paul, we have nothing to lose. What an opportunity to share Christ. You have a captive audience. Where are they going? Even the guards have got to listen. And one did one night. And came running in with a sword and was going to kill himself. And they said, oh, don't do thyself no harm, for we're all here. He fell down and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And that guard and 42 members of his household got saved. You never know what God's going to do. You see, so you don't give up. But let's not live in missed opportunities, regrets. So let's take a look at Paul. Father, thank you for tonight. Help us now, Lord, as we look at this great man of God, this great missionary, this great Christian, but yet a man at the same time said he was wretched, he was carnal, an old wretched man, who am I, who would deliver me? A man who one time claimed that he was the chief of sinners, and yet now incarcerated, locked up in prison, facing governors and kings, waiting to appeal before Caesar because he had that right as a Roman citizen. We're citizens of heaven, and we have that right to share the gospel. So, Father, we thank you. Give us wisdom now, Lord, understanding of your word, and a time together in your word now. In Jesus' name, amen. In verse 32 is our text verse we're using tonight, Acts chapter 26 and verse 32. Then said Agrippa unto Festus, this man might have been set at liberty if he had not appealed unto Caesar. We don't know that they were going to let him go or not the way they were acting. But, let's see, so Paul then appeals to a King Agrippa. Paul appeals to the authority in place. Sometimes you might have to appeal to the authority. Sometimes you've got to go past a few to get to the main person and that's what he was doing here he was appealing and we find that in Acts chapter 26 and you can read it there as he stretched forth his hand and wanted to go to, to Agrippa the opportunities to share his testimony to the Jewish Sanhedrin okay to Felix the Roman governor 
to Festus, the Roman governor, and now to Agrippa, the king of Palestine. So Paul was taking all of these opportunities to share Christ. You see all the opportunities he had? And we sometimes, Lord, give me an opportunity. God gives us opportunities every day. We have opportunities to share the Lord every day. Tracks, our cards for line 11 are over there to go home with me. I mean, we have opportunities. I'll have an opportunity tonight to uh, top off the tank maybe on the way home or whatever to grab something in for us to eat. And I'm going to run into somebody. That's an opportunity. Now, is, is that by coincidence? No. Is it by accident? No. And so it is how we handle that when we're with them and how we speak to them. But it's an opportunity. Paul faced his former choices. He said, man, he said, I thought about myself. And he said, I, thought, he said, I ought to do many things that are contrary to Christ. And so he, he faced those times. Have you faced some of those times when we should have done something for Jesus and we didn't? When we should have spoke up and we didn't? When we had an opportunity to do so? And, and as Paul, you know, sometimes, church, we have to face that. We have to face that, hey, you know what, I blew it. Anybody ever say that about it? Oh, I've done that. Man, I mean, it's almost like God opened up the door and put the person right in your lap. And then you just went on about your merry way, and you get down the road a little bit, and you say, man, and the Spirit of God hits you right between the eyes, and you go, wow, did I blow that. Went by a guy, he was sitting on a stump by one of these quick kings or something. And I came out and drove off, and the Lord said, man, there's a perfect opportunity. I said, yes, you're right. Drove, turned around, came back to the car, get out of the car. And I said, sir, I, want, I said, what you doing? He said, oh, he said, I'm just out here uh, sitting under the great big blue sky. And he said, I'm just talking to the man upstairs. I said, would you like to give your heart to the man upstairs? Would you like to trust the one who made the stars? Well, 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 well you know, and, and we got to talk and we got to witness to the man and, and led the man to Christ. He's sitting on a tree stump, out sitting under the blue sky. See, we pass up opportunities that are right there before us that the Lord gives us. Paul used his life as a testimony, to share the gospel in every opportunity given to him. Now, that's something for us to think about tonight. God's going to give you and I all kinds of opportunities. And why does he do that? So we can share our testimony with those people. When we were in Ghana with, with Pastor DePaul, and we would win people to Christ in the meetings and the crusades and everything, and we were living in the villages, and then all during the week, during the week, we would hold classes for all those that came to Christ, and we would teach them two things. We would teach them, one, that they need to follow the Lord in believer's baptism, and why we do that to identify with Christ in his baptism and in obedience, and so that was my class, and then Pastor DePaul, Pastor DePaul was teaching them on how to give their personal testimony. Now that you're saved, tell somebody. And so and then we would switch classes. His class would come over to mine, mine would go over to his. And we do the same thing. We do that all week long. And then by the time the end of the week, we'd be down at the river baptizing hundreds of people. You see, use your testimony. Pastor Nepal would be teaching these, these, these Ghanaians that live out in the, in the bush. There's no jungle in Ghana, okay? It's rainforest and bush. Okay, jungles are South America. Okay, piranhas are in South America. They're not in the rivers of Ghana. But I thought they were. But the kids straightened me out. Pasta, that's in South America. Oh, okay, thank you. I wasn't sure about what's in this river here. But use your life's testimony. People all the time say, well, I don't know what to say. And I don't know the Bible as well as you do, or I don't know the Bible as well as somebody. Are you saved? Then you got a testimony. Share your testimony. Tell them how Christ changed your life. 
Tell him how he came into your life. Tell him what you did. Tell him how you got saved. That's all you got to do. You don't have to know the Bible from cover to cover in every verse. You just need to tell somebody how you got saved and how he changed your life. And take that opportunity, whether it be at work, at school, the neighborhood, whatever. But Paul used his life. Anybody here got a testimony tonight? How many of you got a testimony tonight? Everybody saved here has got a testimony tonight. Use your testimony. Well, I don't know the Mark Road. I don't know the Roman Road. I don't know the Revelation Road. That's okay. Do you have a testimony? Well, if you're saved, you got a testimony, then use your testimony. That's all you have to do, and that's what Paul did in this situation, and all these guys and everything he's under. Uh, Paul knew his purpose uh, was, uh, there, was, uh, was determined to fulfill his mission. Paul knew what his purpose in life was, and he was going to fulfill his mission. Now, I'm just going down through Acts chapter 26 here, and kind of taking us on a little short journey, and you can read it. That's in verse 26, and you pick it up in verse 17 and 18, when Paul was confident of what his purpose in life was, and that was to share the gospel. You know what our purpose in life is for, church? It's to share the gospel. Amen? Because, see, if God didn't need you and I to share the gospel, and that wasn't what our purpose is, then as soon as we get saved, you might as well take us home. Why hang out down here when we can go to heaven? But, you see, the problem with that would be, then who'd be left? Tell somebody about Jesus. Do you know that you get a privilege that the angels do not get? Did you know that the angels do not have the privilege to share Christ with someone? Did you know that when you get to glory and you're around the throne of God and you're singing, redeemed, I'm redeemed? Did you know the angels cannot sing that song because they are not redeemed? Man, you got more privileges than angels got. Wow. So use your life's testimony. Make it your purpose to share Christ with somebody. Okay? People get saved. There are people out there who need to hear the gospel. There really are some out there just looking and waiting for somebody to come and tell them. Now, I know that's getting further and farther in between. Not like it was 30, 40 years ago. I'd even like to go back to Ghana to see if it was like when we were there. Now, folks, if you wanted to get up in the morning and get gone at 6 o'clock in the morning and go out soul winning, you could go out soul winning all day long till midnight or as long as you want, as long as your feet and your voice would hold up and win people to Christ. All, every day, all day. They had such a hunger for the Word of God. The field was open. I mean, that place was truly white unto harvest, and so they were praying for laborers to come, and we went. I don't know if it's like that now or not. See, Pastor DePaul again, I'm going to ask him, how is it? Is it like it was when we were there? Or has it gotten different? Are they becoming more cold and indifferent to the gospel? More worldly, more westernized? You know, I mean, that's really, that's what happens. Or is there still that hunger to fight over a gospel track? Nearly mow you over to get one. Scared me to death several times with Carol in our meeting. She'd be over there handing out tracks, and I would look and couldn't find her, couldn't see her. And I'd have to crawl up on top of the van to try to find her because she was being smothered by them wanting tracks. Bibles, they'd had none and would give anything for a Bible. That's why our own teaching Bibles we took, which was one of them, right? I don't know if I had this one here or not, maybe my other one. I had to literally tie it to my body or it would be gone. Now the ones we took over, I don't care if they stole them, but don't steal my study Bible. <laughs> Amen. Don't pass up opportunities. Your purpose in life is to share Christ. That's my purpose in life. All right. Paul kept his primary purpose in the forefront of every opportunity. You see, don't focus so much on, that, on the situation or the circumstance. Keep the, uh, keep the forefront out in forefront. What your main purpose is, is, okay, so why am I meeting this person today? Why is this person coming in contact with me today? Why are we going here today to meet this person today? You think you're going there for a meeting or to solve this or resolve this or get this or purchase this or sign a contract for this. No, you know what you're going there for? To share the gospel. 
That ought to be the forefront of your focus is to share Christ with them. So Paul took every opportunity, and that's what we need to take and set forth, you see. And, and, and Paul, he, and then, of course, old Festus, he jumped into the middle of all this, and you can read it there if you want to, and he tried to discourage Paul and dismiss it. But Paul, but, but you know what, what did he do? Here's what Paul did. Rather than be shut down, Paul appealed to King Agrippa again. He said, no, no, Festus, you're not going to shut me down. I'm going to appeal and ask to go before King Agrippa. Why? Because that's what his purpose was, was to share the gospel. That was his opportunity to seize the moment that God would give him. And so that's what he did. Hey, folks, don't let people shut you down. Now, I want to tell you something. When you get into conversation and you get, no matter where you're at, somebody's going to try to shut you down when you start talking about Jesus. Oh, yeah. huh? Come on, talk to me if you've been there. You know what I'm talking about. You start trying to talk about the Lord, and believe me, the devil will pop his head up, and somebody will start trying to change the subject, uh, divert you, and all this. Don't let it happen. You stay focused. See, when we were t in teaching soul winning in those classes, we, we go through all this and teach this and train this, and you've got to train the person. You have to bring them back to Jesus. Let them rant and rave and go, bring them back to Jesus. Always bring them back to the cross. Bring them back to Jesus. They cannot argue with Jesus and the cross and the Word of God. Let them rant and rave, bring it back to Jesus. Let them rant and rave, bring them back to Jesus. And eventually, guess what? They're going to start listening about Jesus. Because you see, there is something about that name, church. And there's power in Jesus' name. There really is. And you take control of the conversation. Don't let the devil shut you down. You have a mandate and a command from God to share the gospel with that person. And of course, the devil will do everything he can do to distract it and pop his head up and you name it. Trust me, he will. And you just got to keep right on going. Don't worry about it. Paul made one final appeal in his life to Agrippa. One more time he tried. And then here comes the consensus from the king, uh, the king, the governor, Bernice, and all of the others. Here's what's the consensus of all these people he talked to. Bernice, Festus, Felix, Agrippa, the lawyer, all these guys. Here's, here, here's what's the consensus from the king, the governor, Bernice, and all of the others was, if only, if only, if only. I had to listened. If only I would have had it. Chapter 26, verses 30 and 32. And when he had thus spoken, the king rose up, and the governor, and Bernice, and they that sat with them. And when they were gone aside, they talked between themselves, saying, This man doth nothing worthy of death or, or of bonds. Then said Agrippa unto Festus, This man might have been set at liberty if he had not appealed unto Caesar. If only. So that's a little bit what's been going on in Paul's life, okay? Just to give you an idea of what the heads up of what's been happening. So you can imagine meeting all of these kings and governors and everybody else and all of this and these accusations that were brought against him and everything for, for sharing the resurrection of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Paul said, no, I'm not going to let this whoop me. I'm not going to let them beat me down. I'm not going to let them have a victory in this. I'm going to keep sharing Christ with them. I'm going to take all these opportunities that they're giving me. See, they thought they were having all this to knock him down and then put him away. And he took it and turned it around and used it for an opportunity to share Christ. And in the end was, this man's done nothing. Huh? All the accusations they brought up against him and accused him of. And after all of this, and Paul being able to defend himself, appealing to, 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 to King Agrippa, when it was all said and done, these guys went in and had their conference and their coffee and their tea and come back out and said, this man is worthy, is, is worthy of, of, of no wrongdoing. He's not worthy of death. This man's done nothing. And yet he was accused of everything. See, how are you going to argue with Christ? How are you going to argue with the gospel? I can't do it. But Paul needed to go to Rome. Man, if this man had only, if he would just shut up. No, I've got to go to Rome. I need to present the gospel to Caesar. Can you imagine that? Caesar is the most biggest, the most powerful man in the known world of the Roman Empire. And Paul says, no. I must go to Rome. Yes, I'm going to lose my life there. He knew he was. He knew he was going to be killed in Rome. He knew that. 
but I must go to Rome because I must share the gospel with Caesar. Wow. Who's God got in your way and my way for us to share the gospel with? Okay? Sometimes we may have to go somewhere. Sometimes we may have to get in our car and go someplace to meet someone or to tell someone about Christ. You see, what is it? Who is it that the Lord wants us to talk about or to? So, when we make our plans, okay, how many of us make our own plans? Anybody here make your own plans? Sure we do. Amen. All right? But God holds the key to his purpose being fulfilled. You see, so God's got a plan and a purpose too, by the way. Amen? Jesus said in John 10, 10, But the thief cometh but to kill, to steal, and destroy. But I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. A life full of meaning and purpose. That's what the word abundantly means. So you see, God has a wonderful plan for your life. How many of you remember when we were younger and we used the four spiritual laws? You remember Youth for Christ and the four spiritual laws? We had the chairs and the thrones and all that stuff we used in there, and we would tell those people we were witnessing to, do you realize that God loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life? We were quoting John 10.10, the second half of that verse. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. He has a plan and purpose for my life. He had a plan and purpose for Paul's life. But you see, we sometimes get in the way because we got our own plans. Hello, talk to me. You know we do that. There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. What? The counsel of the Lord that shall stand. That's Proverbs 19.21 from King Solomon. So Paul knew Jesus' words had predicted that trouble may come. Paul knew that. He knew trouble was coming. And you can read that in Luke on that as he talks about it. He said, matter of fact, but before all these, they shall lay their hands on you. They shall persecute you. They shall deliver you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. And it shall turn to you for a testimony. You see what God says? I've got a plan. And my plan is to bring you before all these kings and governors and dignitaries because you're going to turn it in to a testimony. So see, whatever, God's got a plan. And that's God's plan for us. Because whatever he brings in our lives, it's for a testimony, it's for a purpose. And we need to know that what Jesus said, hey, trouble's going to come. In this world you shall have tribulation, amen? But be of good cheer, for I have overcome. All those that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution, amen? Job said, man born of woman, his days are full of trouble. Thank you, Job. Amen? So we're going to have them. They're going to come. Don't, oh, why is me and how come this has happened to me? No, you're not the only person in the human race that's having troubles and problems. We all are. And God wants to use these for a testimony. I don't like the problems we're going through right now. I don't like the conflicts we're going through. That's why this man I was talking to this week, he was talking, and, and, and this guy, he, uh, he always wants to win. He's got to be the winner in everything and everything. And I said, man, you know what? You needed to be in church Wednesday night. The message we were talking about was conflicts, and we were talking about the person that always has to win. I said, it had been good for you. You should have been here. Amen. Paul knew the importance, okay, of always being ready to share God's message. Folks, you've got to be ready. You've got to always be ready to share the gospel. Now, we've got a little background of all what this man's been going through for the last two or three Sunday nights in, all of, in, in, this, in this series that we've been looking at. And this man was always ready to share the gospel. He was all ready. And your feet should be shod with the preparation of peace, the gospel of peace, Ephesians 6, 15. To always be ready to share the gospel. And then you need to keep focused on the plan and purpose of God, not your plan and purpose. We've got to stay focused on God's plan and purpose for what he has for us. And that is to share the gospel. Then King Agrippa said unto Paul, thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Agrippa, for the second time he's appealed, and Agrippa says, you can speak. He's going to speak. Stay focused. And what did Paul do when he did? You know what Paul did? He shared the gospel with King Agrippa. You see, Paul requested to speak. Was he requesting to speak to King Agrippa in defense of all the accusations? No, not at all. 
Paul knew his life was coming to an end and soon. No, he was appealing so that he could share the gospel with the king. An audience with the king to share the gospel. Stay focused. Paul spent two years in prison. Now, you see, to him and to you and I, we think, wow, what a delay in my plans. Anybody had any delay in your plans? Huh? And, and, and your plans, huh? There's been some delay, some setbacks. All right, now, be careful. Okay? Don't let that hinder you from the main purpose. What's the main purpose? To share the gospel. You see, delays are going to come. And there will be things that are going to be delayed. But don't let that hinder you from the main purpose. And that is to share the gospel. Delays are going to come. Mark it down. Okay, so we got another delay. Okay, I got another opportunity to share the gospel. Who with now? Bring them on. I'll tell you what. That sometimes you'll find that it goes to your favor. It gets rid of people real quick. I've met with some ugly guys and some mean people. And they just start talking about Jesus. You know what? They leave. So I don't want to listen to this. Well, fine. That's all I got to talk about. That's what Paul had. That's all Paul had to talk about. See, he wasn't talking about his defense and all the things that happened to him. Now, he did one share his testimony on that fact about that, that he had been in the synagogue daily teaching and preaching the temple. He was causing no troubles and problems. But other than that, he was using every opportunity to share the gospel because he knew that's what his purpose was. When you go over and read Acts chapter 9, in the book of Acts chapter 9, this is where Paul meets the Lord on the road to Damascus and gets saved. And he goes to Ananias' house and he gets his sight back and he's told what to do. But before he does... The Spirit of God comes to Ananias and says, listen, this guy that's been killing Christians and putting them in jail, he's going to show up at your house. Oh, what do you mean here, Lord? I don't want this guy at my house. This is Ananias. He said, oh, yeah, he's coming, but he's blind, so you don't have to worry about it. He can't see you. And he said, I've already met him on the road to Damascus, and you're going to lay hands on him and receive his sight back to him. All right? And this is what he told Ananias. Ananias says, he shall go thy way. For he is a chosen vessel unto me, and I will show him how much great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And that's what he told Ananias about Paul. And Paul, boy, did he suffer for the cause of Christ. But in all of that suffering, situations, circumstances, everything, he took the opportunity that this was an opportunity to share Christ. Because even if I get thrown in jail and they cut my head off, I'm going to heaven. I get a new head. Amen. Huh? But we would cry and moan and oh my goodness, we'd fuss and you name it. I'll tell you, they don't make them like they used to, do they? They don't, folks. Paul was undaunted by the refusals to hear his message. That they didn't bother him. That they refused to hear his message of salvation. And what did he do? He continued to share the gift. See, don't get discouraged. I see what I see there. Don't get discouraged. Well, they're not listening to me. How do you know they're not? You plant the seed, the Spirit of God will do His work. And He may not do it right then, it may be later down the road. But don't get discouraged. Well, they're not listening to me. Hmm, I think I'm preaching to myself. Preachers get real discouraged. Because they preach their hearts out and they wonder if anybody's ever listening. Jeremiah faced that. The Lord went to Jeremiah and said, I'm going to send you to a people that are going to be, they're not going to hear a word you say. I could just hear Jeremiah, thanks a lot. Wow, I really appreciate that, Lord. That, that the boy, what did I do to get this? No, I'm going to send you to a bunch of stiff necked, rebellious, hard headed, hard hearted Jews that are not going to hear a word you say. And that's why he became the weeping prophet. Oh, my. So don't get discouraged. You keep sharing the gift. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Now, if only, if only, remember, if only, we said that a little bit earlier. If only, how shall you and I deal with the regrets? If only I had have done this. If only I would have said this. 
If only I would have given that person a track. If only I would have invited them to church. The opportunities that we've missed. And we've gone away and said, man, did I blow that. How do we deal with that? Can I get a raise of hand at least for anybody that anybody's been there? If only I had done, gone, said, whatever. You've been there. You know what I'm talking about. And sometimes it'll haunt the daylights out of you, won't it? And if you've had enough opportunities like that and been in that situation where you've talked to people, and as I have, and, 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 and I've seen that person die, and I have let it eat me up inside, sometimes for days, weeks. Lord, were they saved? Did they ever come to Christ? Oh, my God, I blew it. I had an opportunity, and I blew it. And I just say, oh, Lord, I pray that somewhere between that blown opportunity and that person passing, that somebody shared Christ. Please don't say, well, somebody would have, and that somebody was you. So how do I? How do I? Well, here we go. Paul had regrets from his past. Anybody here got some regrets from your past? Huh? Are we all in that boat tonight? Okay, good. But, but, here's the conjunction. He was able to overcome those nagging temptations that would allow those regrets to overcome him. Don't let your regrets overcome you. That's the past. There's nothing you can do about it. It's history. You can't take it back. You can't go back. Now sometimes you can. If it's someone you've witnessed to and years have gone by, or you didn't, and God lays that person on your heart again. I tell you what, don't blow it this time. Share Christ with them. Send them a track. Do something. But overcome your regrets. Okay? You can. That's why Paul said in 1 Timothy 15 and 16, This is a faithful sir saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. How be it for this cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should be hereafter believe on him to everlasting life. Be an overcomer of probably some regrets that you have in your life. Be an overcomer. So how do I do that? How do I have this? How can I be an overcomer of these regrets? How do I overcome some of the regrets in my life tonight? Or how have I? Which I believe I have. And some of those things that I've just talked with you and shared about. I'll tell you how. First thing, here you go. Confess your sin. Confess your sin. Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I blew it. Lord, I didn't take and seize the opportunity that you gave me. And sometimes you have to admit why. Because I was too busy with myself. I was too busy with my plans, my purpose, my going or doing my thing. I was too caught up. Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry. Now, folks, when you do, what does he do? He forgives you. He cleanses you from all sin and all unrighteousness. And guess what? We are no longer under condemnation. So, listen to me. Quit beating yourself up if some of those opportunities have passed and gone and there's some regrets there, be an overcomer tonight. Jesus can forgive that sin or sins and he will. And he will cleanse it and part it and never remember it. And therefore, because you are in Christ, you're under no condemnation. 
So don't beat yourself up. You've got to move on. But what you need to do then is you promise the Lord, Lord, I promise you, some way, somehow or another, I won't let that happen again. I'll do my best to take that opportunity, to seize that moment, to whatever, to share. And when the Spirit of God says, give that person a track, give it to them. When the Spirit of God says, stop and speak to that person, give it to them. When the Spirit of God says, go over there and talk to that man or woman, go over and do it. Because if the Spirit of God is talking to you to do it, you need to go do it. Because the Spirit of God's got that person already, they've been working on them and ready. And you blew the opportunity, so don't do it. So we can overcome the regrets. We can overcome those sad times in our hearts. Has anybody through the years and your age, you've had that happen, and that person's died, and you wept over it? You ever been there? I have. And, and, and you just want to go beat your head against the wall, don't you? And say, oh, God. I'm sorry, if only, if only, if only, if only. See, we're talking about tonight, if only. Then, Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry. I messed up. I blew it. But thank God for your forgiveness. And thank God for your grace. And my prayer is again, Lord, it's hopefully somewhere between my mess up Somebody talk to them about Jesus. Oh, you see, confess it. And if you have offended others, seek their forgiveness as well. Okay? Before you bring your gift, go make it right. All right, let's move along thirdly. Remember, God can use all things for good, even our failures and sin. You listen to me? God can use all things for our good, even our failures and our sin. And we know, say that, and I know, what do you know? That how many? All things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. Say, that describes me. Then guess what? All things are going to work for your good. Okay, Give thanks in all circumstances. Now I'm trying to help us tonight how to be an overcomer over the regrets that we've had in our lives. Maybe you've had some recently. Maybe some just this week or last week. Maybe some in the past that have been bothering you, bugging you. You know, when you've had those quiet times and all of a sudden it just comes up in your thinking, in your mind, say, oh man, I wish if only, if only, If only you can't live that way, you can be an overcomer, all right? Give thanks in all things, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you, amen? Don't let your past define your future. Come on, church, don't let your past define your future, or it will eat your lunch. We've all got a past. Everyone in here's got a past. Everyone in here's got a skeleton hanging in your closet. I guarantee you. Well, if you do, you know what you need to do? Go home and take that skeleton out and throw it out. Because there's no sense in you having to go to bed at night listening to that thing rattling at night inside your closet. And you're thinking, what in the world is that noise? That's one of my past skeletons. It's rattling. No, no. Out you go, bub. Out you go. Don't let it define your future. You move forward tonight. You trust God with His plan for your future and for your life. Because God has a plan and purpose for your life. And you trust Him for it. All right? And we could, uh, we could go on and read that. God has designed us to be fruitful and to fulfill our purpose. God has designed us, church, for that. To be fruitful and to fulfill our purpose. Ephesians 2.10 For we are His, what? Workmanship. 
created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Watch this. Which God hath ordained that we should walk in them. See, God's already ordained your future path to walk in. He's already designed it. And that's to be fruitful. Jesus said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And I have ordained you that you should go forth and bear fruit. And you should bear much fruit. And herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. There's the design and plan of God for our life. From now and as we move forward. I can't worry about the fruit in the past that didn't get it. I can't go back. But I can move forward. And God takes care of the past. Paul says putting those things behind. Putting the past behind and moving forward to the high calling of Christ. To press towards the mark that God has for us. No, we can't undo some of the missed opportunities. No, we can't go back and undo some of the missed witnessing opportunities we had. And so forth. We, can't, we cannot do that. But we can go forward and take the advantage of the opportunities that God gives us now. Why? He's not finished with us. Aren't you glad when God said, well, that's it. You blew that. So you're done. Lights out. No, because God still has a plan for you and a design for you, and that is to bear fruit. And you can't do that if you're in the box in the ground. Even David said that, Lord, how can I praise you from the, from the grave? Oh, man. Here's the last one, and we're done. Be changed. Be changed no matter what is behind you. Okay, we're talking about, we're, we're trying to get past the regrets. If only, if only, if only. We don't need to live that way. Paul was determined he wasn't going to live that way. Paul was determined he wasn't going to live that. And such, look, look what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 6, 11. And such were some of you. But ye are washed. Say, I'm washed. What are you washed in? You're washed in the blood. Okay? But ye are sanctified. What are you? You're set apart. But you are justified. You're just as if you never sinned. You're made righteous before God and saved in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Amen? So let's live tonight, church, with no reserves, no retreats, no regrets. If Paul can do it, you and I can do it. Because we serve the same God. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And as Paul said, you and I can do all things with Christ who strengthens us. So we can live with no reserves. We can live with no retreats and we can live with no regrets. So we got to determine we're going to move forward and go forward. Next week we'll spend our last one as we go into 27 and 28 and wrap it up. This wonderful journey. But Paul has really shared some great things with us and great missionaries and great work. But you see, now tonight, church, well, you see it's still on the screen. I've heard the word. I've been a hearer of the word tonight. But my brother James tells me, if all I am is a hearer, I'm deceived. But, James said, if I will be a doer, then guess what? In all of my deeds, especially in taking opportunities to share Christ, I'm going to be blessed. And you know what those blessings are? Fruit fruit so let's go out and be doers and don't let the devil beat you up with those three words up there you tell him greater is he that lives in me than you that live in the world and I can devil do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me now you need to be gone and go bother somebody else. Amen. Amen. Father, thank you for tonight. Thank you for what we've learned from your word tonight. Uh, from the book of Acts and from Paul. And yes, we skim through this chapter of 26 and a part of 27. But I think we've got the picture of the overall. Take every opportunity that we have.
to fulfill the purpose that you have for our lives. And that is to take the message of Christ to everyone. It's not what we think it is and why we're going here, meeting here and all that. No, no, no. This is to share Christ, hand out tracts, invite them to church. You know, tell them, give them our testimony. So that we don't have to live with no reserves and no regrets and, and no retreats. And so, Father, thank you. Thank you for the wonderful example of Paul the Apostle. Father, we thank you that it was not Paul, but it was Christ in him. And we thank you for that, and we praise you for it. Now let us go from this place and refreshed and encouraged a little bit tonight that we're not going to let our past and the regrets, and we're not going to let the if only I had done or said or went, we're not going to let that defeat us. We're going to move on and forward for Christ. And if we need to, we'll ask for forgiveness for those things. That Christ will forgive us, cleanse us, deliver us. And we can move forward for Christ. Father, we thank you for it. Lord, bless our little church here. Father, please pour out your spirit upon it. Your blessings, your fire of your Holy Spirit. Upon this congregation for your glory for your honor Lord to accomplish your purpose and your will Father we need that desperately and we'll thank you for it now Lord once again before we go please be with those in the Bahamas watch over them especially Lord the little children that would be so frightened and so scared but even the big children get frightened and scared with that type of fury. Father, protect them, keep them safe, keep it to a bare minimum. And Father, through this, may their good come from it. Through these ashes, may their joy come. Through this, may, be, may a multitude be one to Christ and saved and born again. And then Father, by your grace and mercy, would you spare our state and we'll give you all the praise and glory and now before we do go again please remember those folks in Texas of the tragic that they have gone through comfort their hearts with your Holy Spirit help them to see good from this Lord help them to see that ashes can turn into glory help them all to see there, there may be weeping through the night but joy does come in the morning. And Father, we'll give you the praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.